Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells which derive its name from the reticulum of RNA and protein precipitated by the fixation and staining that appears microscopically after treatment with supravital dyes. The reticulum network or granules represent precipitated rough endoplasmic reticulum with associated polyribosomes. Reticulocytes in comparison with mature erythrocytes show greater volume approximately by 24%. Reticulum stains blue and the cytoplasm has diffuse shades of pale greenish blue. Maturation stages of reticulocytes according to Hellmeyer's classification is divided into various groups. Group 0 represents nucleated erythrocyte or orthochromatic normoblast which stains strongly for reticulin and the nucleus. This cell type is not included in the reticulocyte count. Group 1 represent non-nucleated red cells appearing with a dense clumped reticulum. They comprise 0.1% of the population of reticulocytes in normal individuals. Group 2 represents extended network of loose reticulum. These reticulocytes comprise 0.7% of the total reticulocyte population in normal individuals. Group 3 type shows scattered granules with residual reticulum network. They comprise 32% of the reticulocyte population in normal individuals. Group 4 shows scattered granules. They comprise 61% of the reticulocytes in normal individuals. The NCCLS ICSH definition states that reticulocytes must have at least two blue staining granules visible without fine microscope adjustment and located away from the cell margin to avoid confusion with Heinz bodies. Preferred sample for reticulocyte count is EDTA anticoagulated blood. Satisfactory counts may be made on blood that has been allowed to stand unstained for as long as 24 hours although the count will tend to decrease after 6 to 8 hours unless the blood is kept at 4 degrees centigrade. The materials required for reticulocyte count are stains, 75 by 12 mm test tubes, pasture pipettes, glass slides, spreader slide, microscope, blood cell counter, Miller's ocular or field reducing mechanisms. Reticulocytes are stained supravitally. That means the cells are live while being stained. Hence, you should not stain a smeared sample. The usual stains employed are new methylene blue, brilliant chrysal blue and azure B. Better and more reliable results are obtained with new methylene blue than with brilliant chrysal blue as it stains the reticulofilamentous material in reticulocytes more deeply and more uniformly than does brilliant chrysal blue, which in turn varies from sample to sample in its staining ability. Azure B is a satisfactory substitute for new methylene blue. It has the advantage that the dye does not precipitate and it is available in pure form. Procedure Deliver 2 to 3 drops of the dye into a test tube. Add 2 to 3 volumes of the patient's EDTA anticoagulated blood to the dye and mix well. If the red blood cell count is too low, add more volume of blood and if it is too high, add less volume. Keep the mixture at 37 degrees centigrade for 15 to 20 minutes. Resuspend the cells by gentle mixing. Make smears of this stained blood on glass slides. When dry, examine the smears without fixing or counter staining. Choose an area where the red cells are evenly distributed and the staining is good. Use the 100x oil immersion objective. The exact volume of blood 
to be added to the dye solution for optimal staining depends on the red blood cell count and or hematocrit. As compared to normal blood, a larger proportion of anemic blood and or a smaller proportion of polycythemic blood should be added. In a successful preparation, the reticulofilamentous material should be stained deep blue and the non-reticulated cells should be stained in diffuse shades of pale greenish blue. An area of film should be chosen for the count where the cells are undistorted, where the staining is good and RBCs are not overlapping. To count the cells, use the 100x oil immersion objective. The counting procedure should be appropriate to the number of reticulocytes present. Very large numbers of cells have to be surveyed if a reasonably precise count is to be obtained when only small numbers of reticulocytes are present. Two major factors to be kept in mind are identifying the reticulocytes and calculations. Both will be discussed here. Morphological identification now let us look at some microphotographs. Identify the reticulocytes in these fields. How many stages of maturation can you see? So this is a group 1 reticulocyte appearing with a dense clumped reticulum. This one is a group 2 reticulocyte with extended network of loose reticulum. Group 3 reticulocyte with scattered granules with residual reticulum network and group 4 reticulocyte with scattered granules but no residual reticulum. The NCCLS ICSH definition states that reticulocytes must have at least two blue staining granules visible without fine microscopic adjustment and located away from cell margin to avoid confusion with Heinz bodies. Counting and calculations. Errors in reticulocyte counting are very common. All care must be taken to standardize the practice. NABL 112 recommends counting at least 1000 red cells and estimating the percentage of reticulocytes by calculation. So if you count 50 reticulocytes in 1000 red blood cells, the percentage will be 50 upon 1000 into 100 that is 5%. This is to give a general idea. Can you count the number of reticulocytes? Yes. How many? 10. Can you count the number of red cells? Difficult. Why? Because there are far too many. An average oil immersion field will have roughly 200 to 300 red blood cells depending on the RBC count in the sample. So how do we manage to count the RBCs in a field with so many cells? The logical answer is to reduce the field where you count red blood cells. A method suggested is using a Miller's ocular. This is an eyepiece attachment to give a square field in the corner of which is a smaller ruled square, one ninth the area of the total square. So square A denotes the entire field and square B one ninth of the total field. You count the red blood cells in the square B only but reticulocytes in the whole field. So percentage reticulocyte count is equal to the number of reticulocytes in square A upon 9 into number of RBCs in square B whole into 100. For example, if the retics are 10 in square A and RBCs are 50 in square B, then the retic count in percentage will be 10 upon 9 into 50 whole into 100 that is 2.2 percent. So does that mean that you can finish your counting by checking just one field? By no means. The larger the number of red blood cells counted, the better is the accuracy. If you see the table, it says how many red blood cells are needed to be counted for an error of 2, 5 or 10 percent with varying reticulocyte percentages. The percentage error increases as the percentage count decreases necessitating the counting of more red blood cells. For instance, if the percentage reticulocyte count is around 2 for a standard error of 10%, at least 550 RBCs should be counted and this implies that the operator should check at least 11 fields and find the average reticulocyte percentage. But this itself will have a possible 10% error. 
if that is not acceptable to the lab, count 2180 RBCs for a 5% error which is checking about 43 fields approximately. So move from field to field in the battlement scanning pattern used for blood smears to reduce sampling errors. Setting up a Miller's ocular in a microscope. So this is how we set the Miller's ocular. Remove one eyepiece and set the ocular in the fixing bracket as shown here. Turn the end of eyepiece counterclockwise and remove fixing bracket for micrometer. Put micrometer on the fixing bracket by printed surface down and then place into the eyepiece. This is a typical example of attaching micrometer. There might be difference between maker and model. You may use just one eyepiece. Automated reticulocyte counting is better than manual methods as there is greater precision of the counts. By analyzing a much greater number of reticulocytes, the statistical error is minimized. When the reticulocyte percentages are between 0.6% and 2.7%, many studies have yielded a CV of less than 10% for automated counting, with a higher CV for counts lower than 0.2%. Visual microscopy has CV ranging from 20% to 40%. Now, what are the sources of error in manual counting? Reagent quality must be checked from time to time this includes filtering the stain solution with filter paper when deposits or abnormal staining is observed. NABL 112 recommends filtering of stain before using every time. Other RBC inclusions like Pappenheimer bodies, Howell Jolly bodies and Heinz bodies will be stained also with new methylene blue. So how to differentiate between reticulocytes and other red cell inclusions? The Pappenheimer bodies usually present as a single small dot or less commonly as multiple dots. Staining a darker shade of blue than does the reticulofilamentous material of the reticulocyte and can be identified by overstaining the film for iron by pulse stain. Hemoglobin H undergoes denaturation in the presence of brilliant chrysal blue or new methylene blue resulting in round inclusion bodies that stain greenish blue. This can be easily differentiated from the reticulofilamentous material. Heinz bodies are also stained by new methylene blue but they stain a lighter shade of blue than the reticulofilamentous material of reticulocytes and stain well with methyl violet. The whole blood stain mixture should be resuspended prior to making the smears. Reticulocytes have a lower density than mature erythrocytes and therefore will be located near the top during incubation. It is essential that the reticulocyte preparation be well spread and well stained. Other important factors that affect the accuracy of the count are the visual acuity and patience of the observer and the quality and resolving power of the microscope. Poor drying or moisture may result in the presence of refractive artifact on the smears. This refractive artifact may be confused with precipitated reticulum. The range of reticulocyte counts in health in adults and children is 50,000 to 1 lakh per liter that is 0.5 to 2.5 percentage. At birth or in cord blood it is 1 lakh 20,000 to 4 lakhs per liter approximately 2 to 5 percent reticulocyte index an accurate reticulocyte count is key to the initial classification of anemia normally reticulocytes are red cells that have been recently released from the bone marrow as a reflection of the normal erythropoietic activity of the marrow this assumption may not always be valid due to premature release into circulation due to many factors here, it is better to express this as a percentage of the red blood cells or as an absolute number per liter. In cases of severe anemia, it has to be expressed as reticulocyte index. Reticulocyte index is equal to observed reticulocyte percentage into hemoglobin or PEC cell volume upon normal hemoglobin or PEC cell volume. 
for internal quality control inter observer variation can be checked the lab may define suitable acceptance criteria for them for external quality control the laboratory can register for equas program for hematology which includes reticulocyte counts 